Well, uh, today we're finishing a cross-country trek to raise awareness for Lyme disease. Um, we started hiking in Delaware on April the 18th, with backpacked all the way back here in southern Indiana. And then on July the 31st, we took off on a bicycle. I did. Logan, Logan and Drew. Drew's my friend here that's helped me do this whole trek. And uh, I just finished about 3,000 plus miles riding out to San Francisco. We saved the last 37 miles here in southern Indiana. And I just finished riding from Chelsea, Indiana, close to Drew's hometown up in Austin. Two more blocks to the pedestrian bridge, and it's a little over 4,100 miles to uh, raise awareness. It's a little bit surreal, it's a little bit amazing. I mean, considering that Logan walked 1,100 miles and rode over 3,000 miles to the Pacific Ocean here from Kentucky, and we started on April 18th, it's been an absolutely phenomenal journey, by the way. Yeah. What made you want to do this, you know? Well, I got really, really sick with chronic Lyme disease from tick bites I got from Cape National Park back in 2011. Um, it took me more than a year to recover a good part of my health. I still had symptoms. And I found out firsthand how marginalized Lyme disease is in the U.S., how it's literally being ignored, if not suppressed, by major public health organizations. Even those like the CDC that admits it's the fastest growing epidemic by far in the United States, if not the world. And a lot of the people that are here with me today are people I met during my Lyme journey that have been sick with this for 20 and 30 years, paying all their expenses out of pocket because none of the insurance will cover anything past four weeks of treatment with Lyme disease because of the inaccurate guidelines that are being put out by an organization called the Infectious Diseases Society of America. It's, it's in all the states that I've traveled across. I hiked the Appalachian Trail two years ago to raise awareness across the country. And part of what I've been trying to demonstrate is this is not a regional or a localized epidemic. It is nationwide. People are catching Lyme disease from these ticks. They're also catching it and passing it through families because it is a cousin of the syphilis bacteria. And it transmits the disease in much the same way that syphilis was spread through bodily fluids, um, through mother-to-child transmission. One of the reasons that the CDC estimates perhaps as many as a million new people every year are being infected with this, most of which don't get an accurate diagnosis and don't realize they have a Lyme infection. So it's growing. If somebody was to be kind of taking this on board with your advice? My advice is to get educated. Um, the best website that I promote is an organization called LymeDisease.org happens to be based in California, because Lyme is huge in Northern California across the whole state. Understand how the ticks operate, how to prevent getting bitten in the first place, and how to seek treatment and be your own advocate if you believe it's possible that you have some of the symptoms of Lyme. And they're multifaceted. Um, it's called a stealth infection. It's also called a mimic infection, because it can mimic the symptoms of so many other diseases, like fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, MS, ALS. A lot of people with those syndromes actually probably have undiagnosed stealth infections like Lyme. Anything else you'd like to add? Um, I'd like to add that we have a wonderful local Lyme support group here, Kentucky and Lyme Support. You can find us on the web. We meet once a month. If you or someone you know in this region suspects that you might have Lyme, do people that have strange symptoms that plagued them for years and have gone to multiple doctors and chased diagnoses, you should really think about the possibility of Lyme. Go to LymeDisease.org and, uh, and read about the symptoms and the depression. Uh,